There's no knowing um, what this is. If you listen to speakers, if you listen to me, and you think I know what this is, that's not what's trying to be said. What's trying to be communicated. There's just no knowing. And the amazing thing that not knowing, no knowing is perfectly okay. That's the surprise. That's the miracle you could say. Because of course, I always wanted to know. There's simply no knowing. There's knowledge. And that's empty. It's relatively worth what it's worth, whatever knowledge you think you have, whatever knowledge you value, has relative value. <laughs> but it's really, it's really empty. This, and when we're talking about this, everything, nothing, all of it, none of it, knowledge is of no value, none whatsoever. And that's the freedom, that's the love, that's the peace, which you've heard talk about. It's not a peace for you. It's not a, it's not a love for you. It's just the end of the one who needed to know. The end of questions that need answers. Questions can still occur, but they don't need answers. And even if answers appear, they're seen for what they are. Just empty answers. They don't have any intrinsic value. Anything that you value is just relatively valuable. And the relative value of things is still the same. You value some things and you don't value others. Well, that valuing, that's not yours either. That was never yours, is never yours. Human beings value some things and couldn't give a shit about others. That's just how it is. And when it's not my valuing, my values, there's a lightness about what, what traditionally Buddhism would call attachment, as though there's something wrong with it. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly natural. This message is not saying about, you know, that attachment is the, is the problem. Attachment isn't a problem. My attachments are the problem. Being attached to me is a problem. All, all the weight that attachment has is the weight is given by me. That is essential for me. That I couldn't survive without that. Whatever that is. And that's simply not true. That doesn't mean to say it would, it would be painless without you to lose an attachment. This message isn't saying that at all. There could well be more pain without your strategies for distracting yourself from the obviousness that something you valued has been lost. It's 
kind of like just staring life right in the face without being able to turn away that everything everything is always being lost it's not that you have something and then it's lost it's always being lost And that's, that's hard for me to hear, for self to hear that. That can't be the case. Well, it is. It is the case. Things are, uh, as things appear, that's the illusion is that they continue to appear, that there is continuity. There isn't. This isn't continuous. The illusion of continuity just comes from me, that I was here yesterday and that I'm here today. And I hope to be here tomorrow. And as dreadful as that sounds, that's, that's love. That's the the uncompromising love, a dreadful kind of love. So this message is really, it really emphasizes how fragile, the fragility of everything. It's more than fragile. Fragile isn't actually a strong enough word to describe this complete lack of continuity, the total absence of things being real, having a real existence separate from everything else. And of course, I don't really care about everything else's existence, but I do care about mine. And that's the thing I hold most dear. And it can be completely devastating if it becomes obvious that I never, I never really existed, not in the way that I always imagined and felt that I did. So if this is heard, this isn't an easy thing to hear. You might say, fortunately, most human beings can't hear this. It just literally isn't heard. But if you hear it, there is no compromise with it. None at all. And bizarrely, that's perfectly okay. <laughs> I know it may not sound it, but it really is an incredible okay. Well, just before we came on, I asked Darren, I said to Darren, what am I going to talk about today? That is not what I was going to say. 
Oh, come out with the heavy shit straight away. Hey, Tim, before you go on too far, there's, there's a slight low level rustle on your microphone. It's not, it's not too bad. So you could do the whole meeting with it, but maybe just give your microphone, your camera a little move around. Maybe give the lead a waggle if there's a lead. Oh, well. There's nothing. There's okay, nothing. Don't, don't worry. Let's have a listen. It may have gone. But it's, not, it's not too bad anyway. So Okay. It's still there. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Heidi's got a hand up. Heidi. Now I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear? Can you hear me, Tim? I can hear you, Heidi. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 So um, then it is um, the point that even if I <clears throat> think about um, contraction mm -hmm. I I realize that I make a concept out of it and it goes on and and I try to lose the concept about contraction but I can see I have no chance I have no chance no, no. to catch anything and sometimes it drives me really crazy <laughs> yeah 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 oh yeah you could drive yourself crazy yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. Uh, not feel contracted yeah yeah and it's it's so it's so good to listen to, uh, then into what comes out of your mouth because it calms me cools me down then because i don't have to do anything no you really don't it's just i can just lay down then on this um Liegestuhl. <laughs> Well, it's even, better, it's even better that you don't have to do anything. It's an impossibility yeah. that you do anything. There's no but possibility. That's even yeah. better. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and worse. Whichever yeah. way you want to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's, yeah. There's, yeah, there's nothing to do. This whole idea of contracted energy, which obviously I heard a lot as a seeker, um, I mean, I don't speak about that, really. I don't speak in that way because there is there is no the whole idea of contraction is that I can then have an idea that I could feel expanded, expansive, um, you know, so I go from a contraction to an expansion. Well, it's neither. There is neither contraction nor expansion. They're just purely ideas. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, what crazy. what a lovely what a lovely fairy story that you can <laughs> you can follow in non duality, which I, I I certainly did. I had the fantasy that I would become one with everything. You know, it's it's okay. really one of the big attractions of non duality. <laughs> it doesn't have many, <laughs> and I even want to burst that one. I even want to shit on that. There is no there is no going from contraction to expansion. Yeah. That's, that's a lovely story for me to tell. I don't like being contracted in this body. I want to be, you know, huge. Yeah. I want yeah. to be God. I want to be God in yeah. this place. Yeah, yeah. Well, if not God himself, then at least one with him, at least sitting on his right-hand side <laughs> so he can stroke me. <laughs> yes, that's and, it. Um, <laughs> you know, those, those kind of fantasies there. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 abound in non-duality type yeah. of yeah. circles. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely huge. What can be built upon um, yeah. upon just one slight thought, just <laughs> one little slight thought. Yeah, and then it well, runs. <clears throat> but I mean, it, it's very innocent. It's really all innocent, though, yeah. Heidi, because yeah. What can you do when you feel contracted and it's painful? There's so yeah. much suffering in that feeling of uh, it's it's dreadful feeling trapped and imprisoned in this body. Yeah, yeah. You, know, I am the I don't one. Don't even here. know. Yeah. <laughs> and so I fantasize about yeah. escaping. 
yeah. into it's just normal yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yes yeah, it's, it's so normal yeah that's what what came to me when i realized i have no possibility then there came suddenly this thought i can not do anything i'm not guilty for nothing there is there is nothing i can i can hang on there is not even the possibility to not hang on something no. it it runs with me it, yes. ru it no it do not runs with me it runs it does yeah. it runs me yeah okay yeah that's it runs me <laughs> it rocks yeah me. that's that's a nice way of putting it. you could yeah. yeah 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 okay okay Thanks, Heidi. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Scott has his hand up. Who's yeah. up? Hi, Scott. Hi, Tim. Hi, everyone. Wow, I came on thinking um, I'm addicted to experience, or I think experience is going to get me something. And then when you just said uh, the real attachment isn't to the world, it's to the me. <laughs> I know. It's like we could tell everyone we could just walk around saying the world has a problem, but it never did. No. It was, it was just me thinking. I, yeah. I couldn't let go of this one. I couldn't let go. No. It's so it's so appealing in a way, you know? Yeah. No, the world, the world doesn't have any problems. Well, I mean, of course I had to invent that. So I, because I couldn't see this. Yeah. That's the real value of these talks. I think is we, we just don't see our little uh, obstacles, our little, you know, Heidi was saying, you know, the, some little thought, I mean, that's the tiniest thought I can imagine. And it, and it, and it's huge. she it created a whole world. Yeah. Oh. So anyway, thank you for that introduction. I liked it. <laughs> I liked a good and potent, <laughs> like a good, like a good slap in the face or a good coffee. Yeah, that was a bit starting with the stick today. Yeah, I mean, you go, you go hard to go home, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah, it, it can feel so devastating when it is obvious that I am the problem. I am all problems. There's only one root of problems, and that is I. There isn't, well, you know, every, everything is okay. That doesn't mean to say it's okay, but it's not a problem. I am the creation of all problems. Elena has a hand up. Um, Hi, Tim. Hi, where are you? I'm here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> can't see you. It, 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 is a, it is a sense of hopeless here. And somebody spoke earlier about the contraction. It's my case felt in the belly. It's, I don't know. It's like, it will never disappear. It will always be like this and uh, it's unbearable. Yeah, it can feel unbearable. You can be certain that it won't always be like this, though. This is never this is never a certain way. <laughs> you can be certain of change. The issue is when I listen to this message, the contraction disappears. Yeah. But after 
immediately, you know, and comes back. And it's like I have to listen to this message all day to be okay, in a way. Oh, that sounds familiar. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I did that. I did that for a few years, where the the only respite I'd get from feeling shit was listening to more of this shit. Yeah, but that I, I mean, I can guarantee that it won't last. I mean, it sounds a bit presumptuous of me to guarantee that but I can guarantee it because of course nothing lasts this is this is constantly appearing disappearing so that it, I mean it may change slowly who knows uh, in a me story you know uh, because I don't know you but I to, I've been to self-inquiry and it's, it's, it's like a question. Do I need to understand something? Do I need to accept something? Do I need to surrender to something? But wh wherever I go, it's something around the corner waiting for me, you know? Yeah. That's always how it is for me. That's the same for every single self. There's always something. So I sort one problem out for myself that I think I've, I've, I've got it now. I've sorted that and walk around the corner. Oh, shit. More problems. Something else for me to do. Something else for me to sort out. Just when I thought I'd um, surrendered that or accepted that or whatever other strategy you're using at the moment, then of course there's always more. But as, as you see it right now, probably even the problems appear, they are different flavor, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, it's, this is forever changing. Of course it's unchanging, but always appearing to change. So it's a hope. <laughs> I hope I haven't given you some hope, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe you did. <laughs> oh no. I'm laughing. Don't, you must, right. Can I just emphasize, nobody else, you know, bring out the compassion here because you'll get the non-duality police onto me straight away. If I am, um, if I give a glimmer of hope, I think I'm all right with everything changes. I think that's pretty given, isn't it? Yeah. If that's the only hope, I think. <laughs> uh, I mean, even that's, that's an illusion as well. I mean, change is only in comparison always. So even that's not true. So I'm going to take the hope away from you, Elena. That's not true either. Because of course, the, any idea of change is, can only be in comparison to how it was yesterday. And uh, oh, I feel a little bit better today than yesterday. But actually, you just, there is just feeling how there's feeling. Always, that's it. You know, I... You, this isn't this isn't about that you you know that Elena will feel better. But I had a crazy thought these days. I was wondering if what is the use living on this earth for all what's, humanity? What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> Elena, you know my answer to that. There's, um, you, if you ask human beings, what's the point? There's, so there's 8 billion different points. Each human being will have a point. Each human being is a point, you could say. And so in that, they, they can't be, you know, one is no more significant or relevant than another. So in that, there is no point. 
but each human being creates meaning and purpose. This is totally natural. It's just that whatever meaning and purpose you've given to life, it's not yours. That's really what's meant by meaningless and purposeless and pointless. In that, there's whatever, what, any point at all. That any point or any meaning is equally pointless and meaningless. And then that is complete freedom to, for whatever meaning happens to be present, happens to appear. It's all okay. Isn't that amazing? It's just great freedom in that. Well, being a woman, I, I, I can't understand it's uh, in loveness with the body. <laughs> Sorry, Elena, I didn't quite catch that. Say that again. Uh, being a woman, I, I can't understand it's uh, at a certain point, an in loveness with the body, of the body. Right. I don't know. No. I don't know, Elena. It's okay not to know. But do you still have questions? Do you still... Do I? Yeah. No. Not really. If there's great, if questions, you know, a thought comes up as a question, <laughs> it's really, it can make me laugh because there's no, there's no answer. It's like, it's just, it just goes off unanswered. So, you know, questions like, well, why did she do that? You know, those sort of everyday questions, which I would have, spent quite a lot of energy and time over analyzing you know she was really off with me today i wonder what's going on with her why did she do that what? No, i was referring to existential question it's no different whether they're mundane everyday relationship questions that's that's the that that's very obvious now so we think existential questions are far more significant than everyday relational questions of you know, just what we call everyday in normal life. And they're of no greater significance. When, when there's no answers and no answers are needed, there are no questions that are higher or lower. You could say the absolute and the mundane just fall into each other you know that all that all the ideas that spiritual questions existential questions are on a higher plane have much greater significance than the mundane about which cat food to buy but one isn't more significant the other than the other Unless I make it so, of course I do. I make it, I make it more significant, but it, it isn't though. Everything, every question, every thought is wonderfully, beautifully insignificant. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to <laughs> communicate that that, when you've heard about love and peace, that is the love and the peace. Who would have ever believed, I wouldn't have believed it, that insignificance is love. For sure you don't communicate this message to me because me doesn't understand it. <laughs> Well, when I'm when I'm intellectual, I don't know, but yeah, when I'm when I'm speaking, when I'm speaking, I don't. I mean, I'm I'm not speaking. 
I'm not speaking to me's or no me's. I'm just speaking to the human beings who are listening. I don't, I don't I, there's, there's no distinction here between, you know, there are people who have got this and people who haven't got it or people who have lost it and those who haven't lost it yet, which way, however way you're looking at liberation, enlightenment, that is very obvious that they're just stories and there's human beings are just what they are. Everyone uniquely special and absolutely ordinary. Well, I feel more relaxed. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, least... Elena. Thanks, <laughs> Elena. Yeah, sorry about giving you hope. I'm, I tried to take it back as best I could. No chance. <laughs> no chance, Tim. <laughs> Thanks, Elena. I've got it. <laughs> I must emphasize, though, because this whole idea of, you know, this message being hopeless, it's really not. The absence of hope, I've said it loads of times, if you've uh, but I, I can't emphasize enough that the absence of hope is not hopeless. They both become obsolete. When this, this, is, this is the entirety. There is, there is no place for hope or hopeless. Because hope and hopeless are both talking about an imagined future. Just imagination. You know, they're both, both words that selves use to themselves and with each other to talk about their optimism or pessimism about a, a, a future that doesn't exist, that never appears. So there is neither hope nor hopeless. until I make the future hopeful or hopeless. And that's what I do. With my story. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Elena. Um, there's quite a lot of things in the chat. I think I'll have a look. I'm not very good at looking at that sort of thing. Um, Heidi says Eckhart Tolle is a wonderful hopeful maker he sure is and Naomi says it feels very beautiful nonetheless to be in this space together right now oh thanks Naomi Naomi it is I mean this is yeah this is a Yeah, this is a treat, really. Pam says there's nothing to figure out. Well, there's always loads to figure out, Pam. <laughs> oh, um, I think there's something, there's a delay, isn't there? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking at my picture and I'm, I'm out of sync. Oh, that's better now. Right. Scott says, slowly swallowed by nowhere and nothing. These are just the final bubbles coming to the surface. Ah. Lovely Scott. Tom says, boldly going nowhere. Very, very Star Trek, I'm a fan. I was a big Trekkie as a kid. Sura, Sura says, shit away. <laughs> Not sure what she means by that. Walter asks a question. He says, in this unknowingness, how is it known that there is no continuity? I don't know, Walter. I don't know that there's no continuity. 
it's just obvious that there isn't any continuity. Uh, that's a shit answer, I know, Walter. I don't know that there isn't continuity. I could say, okay, I could say with continuity that um, nothing continues, but things don't. I could say that for what it's worth. But you mustn't, the, the, whatever I'm, whatever's coming out here, whatever's being said, you, it's not like they're pearls of wisdom that I know, I know what's being said. It's not that way. It's, I don't know what way it is. But, but it just seems obvious that this doesn't, this isn't continuous. This is completely still. The whole illusion is I put the cup down over there. I went to the toilet, I came back and the cup was still there. So of course the cup has continued to be in the same place. No, it hasn't. Shit, that is very um, convincing, though. And that that's still that still is convincing, but it's like the one who would be convinced doesn't care that it's convincing anymore. It doesn't. It's going well. It was there. It was there. It wasn't there. Oh, it's there again. So what? But it's not the the whole notion of like ex it exists in continuous time just seems oh yes oh that old story yeah i remember that old story and you can still tell the story you have to in order in order, <laughs> otherwise you can't engage with other human beings very easily because they're all thinking that's absolutely real and so that relative reality is just exactly the same but it's like it's It's just not really real anymore. Scott has his hand up. But it doesn't. It doesn't stop you still using, you know, language in that way. You couldn't ever speak if you if <laughs> if the ability to um, the ability to speak and respond in a way that accepts there is continuity of things in time then of course you you wouldn't be able to you would have to be a hermit in a cave and not engage with any other human beings because everyone else is speaking on that level the difference being that you can you can easily do that but it just it's just known to be what it is Oh, we're just telling each other stories rather than real life. So real life is real, but it's completely unreal, equally unreal as, as it is real. And all that, that sounds like that must be a juggling act. You know, you know, have you got to, Oh, okay, it's unreal now, then it's real there. No, they're not two. Real and unreal aren't two. Empty and full are not two. Relative and absolute are not two. They're not one either. I can't say what they are. That's why you can't say what this is. You can't say what life is. 
really we're not we're not we're just talking about it might be that the one who needs to know stops needing to know the questions just dry up the questioner lies down goes to sleep doesn't wake up Scott has his hand up. Hi, Scott. Hi, Tim. You know, today I can see that your words aren't taking us anywhere. They're just calming us. They're just comforting us in this kind of sad, inexorable <laughs> journey into nothingness. And there's no fighting it, but there, it's just, it's very calming, and I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Scott. That's nice. I feel like we're all doing it together and we're just kind of slowly and with sadness, you know? Yeah. Being pulled, drowned into this. And uh, it's well, so beautiful, but we wouldn't know that because we're, we've been trusting the mind and, you know, the mind is, is freaking out. And uh, I mean, you say the mind, Scott, but I, you know, I, I never, I never yeah. use the word mind. It's me. It's me who's freaking out. Yeah. It's me, because it's me and my mind. Yeah, so you can say mind, but that's almost once removed from the one, who's, the one who's really shitting himself, and that's me. But in a way, we're here to just pat ourselves on the back and say it's going to be okay. You know, T Tim, yeah. Tim, Tim lives there, and he's not insane. And he, <laughs> he so is. Uh, <laughs> yeah but it's weird being here uh, you know about continuity i read in the vedas like 10 or 15 years ago that you know fire doesn't become ash fire is fire and ash is ash and there's no causality and i remember thinking at the time that's insane that is insane yeah but what what starts to happen is the film slows down so much that you can actually like just get it down to one frame and jump in. And in that one frame, you see everything is exactly what it is right now. And it couldn't be more beautiful. And there was all that distraction, all that yeah. trying, trying to fit it into a place or, or put it in a context or, or add things to it to make it something. They're yeah. just gone. So it, it it is something already. It, it's the only thing, and it's so massive. So the, like the frame slows down, and then and then you, you know, yeah. it just takes over everything. And then when you're back out of it, you go, oh god, that's a dumb film. <laughs> <laughs> the cup on the table. I mean, it's so banal. It's so weird that we chose that banality, thinking that it was safe. It's weird. It's all about security. Yeah. Yeah. It's all plain safe. That's that's really, you know, even the you know the risk taker. Me, you know, the thrill seekers, the risk takers, the yeah. adrenaline junkies, who yeah. seemingly, you know, they they're carefree and they no no. That's they're running, they're running that, hard. <laughs> that, <laughs> it's just a different kind of security. Self is always just looking out for itself. You know, I keep coming back to that scene and. Uh... Schindler's was it Schindler's list like no or maybe uh Saving Private Ryan where there's a two guys fighting in a tower and one guy's one guy has a knife and he's putting it in the chest of the other guy but they're so close they're like almost kissing and he's like it's okay it's okay while he's killing this guy and it's so I, intimate and it's yeah. kind of feels like that's happening all the time it's just like Shh. yeah that is a very um intimate movie yeah it, it's so beautiful, but it's, you know, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah. But you can't do anything about it. It's just happening. And, and so it's kind of like, yeah, it's beyond surrender. It's like, got yeah. no power, never had it. Just imagine the whole thing that I was driving something. Yeah. So I really appreciate these talks. I mean, it's, it's, I think that's what we're doing is, you know, shh, it's okay. 
you're you're dying now. Okay. Well, you're going to be okay. <laughs> well, you're not going to be okay. I really, <laughs> you're not going to be okay. You not are you, but what whatever is this, this is okay. Whatever remains, yeah, yeah. What remains of the day? <laughs> well, the you. most the most incredible. Probably the most paradoxical, most incredible thing, aspect, is that of course nothing was lost. That thing you hold most dear, yeah, yourself, is no loss at all. Is that not the most incredible? Well, it's totally. It's not. It's not incredible. It's unimaginable. It's. It's nonsensical. But that is that is really what what is being said. That's really all that's being said. Everything else is as it is. That's it. The thing that's not as it is is you. The whole sense that there is you managing, doing, looking, hearing. No, it's all empty. It's all empty beautifully full and empty <laughs> and the fullness is much more obvious in the emptiness i mean how again totally paradoxical that when things are not the things that they appear to be they are just appearance they are more real they're not less real in their unreality reality is more vivid it's more alive when there are no things that are alive that's just alive the aliveness is much more palpable it's all there ever is this is not talking about a new way of being there is just this being there isn't a new way there isn't something else there isn't anything to be added to and there isn't even anything to be taken away. This message is talking about the end of something that never was, which is yourself. It's funny, Tim, there's not even gonna be a funeral. There's just not even gonna be, you know, a hand clap. There's not even gonna be a golf clap when you die. It's just, it just, vanishes no. to nothing amazing it always was it's you know you dreamt of all the mourners who hasn't who hasn't um fantasized about their funeral where you're going to be so dreadfully missed you know and the mourners you 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 know you pretend people don't want to cry you pretend that you don't want people to cry at your funeral but that's a lie i mean self wants people to be sobbing unconsolably at your the dreadful loss of this wonderful human being who could never be replaced that's tim, that's my fantasy tim we're the I, ones i'm guessing there aren't many of you who have not had that we're the ones crying at our funeral we're the only ones <laughs> no and most amazingly we're the only even, ones nobody can even see it you don't even get to turn up at your own <laughs> funeral no, but the funeral of this dying is yeah. we're the only one there and we're the only one noticing it and the only one crying. Yeah, no one. And, and that was the fantasy. That was the fantasy of people crying at our funeral. That's our own crying that's going to happen it's at our own funeral. funeral. Oh, yeah. And then it's going to be over and nobody's going to, nobody's going to care. <laughs> They're all going to go home. No, you. I mean, there'll be so much laughing and crying. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastically beautiful. Thank you. Heidi has a hand up. Heidi. I'm, hi. Yeah. So that was great because uh, I remembered when my my father died uh, three years ago. Um, it was absolutely suddenly surprising, and um, I was there with this dead body with this dead face. And I just had the feeling that there was never a, ever a story inside of this body. I realized that this story was in my head. And in this moment, all, all what happened between him and me, I could see, I can decide now, 
I don't know why. I can decide now if I go on with the story or if I just let it go in this moment. In this, I just can say every dead is a is a letting go, and it happens in 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 the time where I am. Yeah. Where I am, where I live, it it, it happens all the time. But in the moment of the dying of, of a father or a mother, it, it can be so uh, clear for me. It was so clear. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to share this. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ivan. Yeah. It might be obvious that in the death of someone that you love, it can be obvious, as Heidi suggested there, that you never know another. We, we only know our own. What we have of another is our own idea, our own feelings, our own experiences, our own. There is no knowing of other. And of course, those experiences, those memories, those feelings, I'm not talking about that they are non-existent, that they go anywhere. They're, they're just as real as ever. They're just not mine. So in that, there can be more love, not less. And when, when another human being dies, the body dies, of course, the other doesn't die because the other was only <laughs> experienced by what you've called yourself. And so there is no death of the other in death. You, you won't hold hands with them anymore, but they, what you've called them, that, that doesn't die at all. And there really is in that, there's really no distinction between what you've called self and what you called other. There's just a false distinction. There, there never was that. There never is that. There's never me and you. You could say that's the great illusion. That's what we're speaking about here. That there's me and you. There's two human beings. Yeah. There's not me and you though. Jackie has a hand up. Jackie. Hi, yeah, and I just want to just, yeah, yeah, no, I was just finding that fascinating what you were just saying then. I just wanted to sort of um, explore that a little bit, just because, like, like two things. Like one is realizing that, now this is kind of psychological, really, but just realizing that, that I, I haven't got a clue about, like, who, who anyone is because all I see is what I think they are so I'm yeah. kind of clear on that but I you know I don't know anybody I don't, I don't know myself you know and yeah. I really don't know other people that's really not but and, that's and not so non-duality that. like, non really no no that's, no, no that's that's just kind of psychological I suppose it's just that my, my mum like I'm facing into my mum dying um and she's alone, she's in pain, I can't go and see her because of COVID. So I'm looking now, from what you're saying, for some kind of comfort in like, what, yeah, I do, uh, that's what. That's why I want you to say more, like how, yes, I, I don't, what do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean there's no other? Just what you just said, Jackie, that's it. No more than what you've just said. Like, like there is no, there is no, like, okay. right. so there is no like my mum. Well, what I'm There's saying, no what, what you know like of my your, mum as, as okay. what, what you know of your mum 
won't die when she dies, will it? No, it just won't be in physical form. Exactly. Or, or it, there won't be a physical form to hang that on. I can't hang it. I won't be able to hang it on on no, a, you, on, a per, on a physical. Exactly that. But you know what your feelings for her, which is really, I mean, at the crux of why we're attached is how we feel about another human being. Does that go anywhere in death? No, it's actually more, it's just more intense. It's, it's like amplified death. You know, that's why grief is so powerful. It's probably the, the greatest expression of love is grief by far, because in the loss of the physical body, then what are you left with? The body's gone. So that's gone, you know, that's no more. What are you left with? You're just left with yeah. what you always had really, you know, and what, what is that? Yeah. It's just yeah. what they meant to you, how you feel about them. I mean, that yeah. you could say that was the yeah. only reality. Yeah, memory is still, yeah. And that doesn't go. Yeah, yeah, and you get to keep that. Do you know, I, I <laughs> yeah. Do you know, sometimes like when, you know, like like years ago, you know, when I, you know, like a relationship would finish, I'd say to myself, you, you don't have to let go of any, any of it. No. You, know, you might not see that person, but you can hold, you can have all the feelings and thoughts no. and memories and you don't have to stop loving someone just because you've split up with them kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, yeah, if no. someone dies, yeah. I, okay, I, I really, yeah, no, I really get, yeah, no, I really, that's really helpful. That's really helpful because it's like, I, I don't have my mum. No. You know, it's not, <laughs> No. yeah. I don't have anybody. I don't have. I don't have myself. Never mind. No. Yeah, because yeah, it's a. Me I mean, it just feels like such a. I don't know, like like the arrogant, you know, like letting go of that arrogance that that I know someone. Just uh, yeah. yeah, pure arrogance. Not 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 in a horrible way, but it is kind of. It's, no, it's it, innocent. Yeah. Oh no, arrogance. it is. That's very. That's right at the core of the arrogance of self is that I really do know other people. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jackie. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. You're welcome. Has anyone else got anything they'd like to ask? Just the last couple of minutes. In the chat, Lynette says that she missed the intro and for a minute she felt deprived. But the message Tim expresses is constant, even if it's seemingly relanguaged each time. I'm drawn by the community and the lovely personalities that echo my experience who appear here. Thank you, lovelings. Nice to have the convivial company. I really give up trying to make sense of anything anymore. Did, so, you, did you say lovelings? Lovelings. Oh, yeah. what a, that's a new one. I like yeah. that. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I might have to adopt that as, uh, you know, Thank you, all you lovelings out there. <laughs> Thank you, lovely. Well, that is nice. Well, Lynette, that, Lynette, that is quite a treat. Thank you very much. You lovely, loveling you. Hal has a stand up. Hal. Who does? Hal. Hal. Hal, yeah. Hi, Hal. We'll hi, Jim. I'm new here. And hi. Uh, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, fine. I'm new here. And uh, thank you so much. I, I really am enjoying this. And um, I think where I'm left is uh, uh, finding it difficult to track whether there's duality or non duality. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how. That's what I'm. That's what I'm finding. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> they're just. They're just. They're just yeah. words. They don't mean anything. Well, because you know, it seems one can go through, or I go through this phase where I feel like I'm go. I go in and out of a kind of a uh, a limitless piece into the contracted, you know, grasping onto a self, and I go back and forth, in and out, and. Um, right. 
starting to get the sense that I don't really need to even track that per se. Absolutely not, Al. You certainly don't. That whole sense of that you're going in and out, that's that's the illusion. Yeah, there's no going in and out. There's no in or out here, Al. You can't get in and you can't escape. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's the yeah, the wonderful message is that how if you've been trying to get in, there's no way in. And if you're trying to be if you're trying to get out, there's no way out. Right. Okay, I, I see that. And in the in that is the is the rest. Great, thank you. You know, this is the, so whatever it, whatever seems to be moving is just seemingly moving in and out. It's, there's no moving. <laughs> this doesn't move, Hal. There's no continuity and there's no moving. No. No matter how convincing the appearance, don't get me wrong, it can still, it can seem to, you know, life can seem to move and life can seem to be continuous. Mm. But that, that's only, you know, that's, that's our wonderful skill as human beings, putting it all together to construct that. We, we, love, we just love a story, how we can't help it. And for a story, you need continuity. What kind of story are you left with without that? <laughs> You've got nothing to tell. <laughs> you know, you have to say, I was in, then I was out. Otherwise, you know, somebody asks you what you've been doing, you haven't got anything to say. Yeah, it seems like the whole struggle is trying to create an, a continuity when there really isn't any continuity. Whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's pretty much what this is. This the what trying to be said is that um, there's no need for that. You know, mm -hmm. the absence of continuity sounds dreadful because that sounds like death to me, mm -hmm. and it actually feels like death to self as well. Because self is the very illusion of being continuous. Uh, the illusion of continuity and self are one and the same, and so. Self will do its utmost to um, to hold on to that. It's so amazing, though, how in that that sense of death and complete emptiness, there's such fullness, you know, such completeness yeah. and wholeness. Yeah. yeah, it's just not. They're just not two things. This isn't empty or full, nor both, and both. There's no. You don't need to know. Because when I say empty, the emptiness is that there's no need to know, there's, there's no knowing. And the fullness is, oh, I know, oh, here's a mug. Look at that, look how full it is. So the knowing, the, the fullness and the emptiness are just ways of saying knowing and not knowing. Can I ask you one thing about that is, uh, yeah. I, I understand, no, I keep hearing no, there's no knowing. I have this sense, no knowing. Oh, my whole life has been about knowing. Let me tell you, I have a bookshelf of uh, of knowledge of uh, spiritual books behind me. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, that's only a fraction of what I have in my house. But uh, and I see, you know, well, and where does knowing really get you? It gets you nowhere. <laughs> but um, yeah, there seems in this, like in this moment, there's some sort of seeing, some sort of seeing, maybe. Does that make sense to you? Um, yeah, you can say they're seeing, but that, again, that's empty as well, you know? Mm -hmm. What does that, what does that really mean? What does that mean anyway? Yeah. 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 That's, you know, yeah, you can say they're seeing, yeah. You could, you know, you can dissect this in any way you want. You know, you can say they're seeing and hearing and feeling and touching and, and, um, however, however we want to categorize this into knowable segments you could say you know to make it knowable and the, the the ability to do that 
is still there, but it's known for what it, you know, for the empty knowing that it is, you know, that it's not, it's not actually achieving. It's not actually keeping me safe. Because really, oh, that's always, that's all knowledge does. Knowledge, knowledge is sought by self in order that I will be safer with greater knowledge, more secure. And of course, we could go one better than knowledge and become wise, you know, have great wisdom. <laughs> I think that's what I was after. <laughs> mm. A wise man once told me, and I thought, oh yeah, I fancy that. Yeah. But this is, this is, it just might be very obvious that all you've learned how and all, for all your insights, you know those revelatory moments that you hold so dear, I did, mm -hmm. and all your great understanding when you've linked, maybe you link spirituality and psychology or three different disciplines and you had an insight how they were all talking about the same thing and there was just, wow, now I'm onto something here. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I was trying to have a theory of everything. Right? Exactly. Where it all comes together. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, if you've got that kind of, I don't know. It's just, it's just <laughs> yeah. oh, now, once I'm special, then I'll have it. Mm. Well, that might all be seen to be, it was, it was all for nothing. Mm. Isn't it much more fun to be a fool? Yeah, exactly. Much more. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, the truth is there aren't any fools or whatever we're calling the opposite of a fool. What, what's the opposite, Hal? You know, whether, you know, the, the whole notion of there are human beings who are, are really clever and then there's foolish ones, that's, that's nonsense as well. That might be seen for the nonsense that it is, that I just wanted to be one of the special clever ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Hal. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, it's, unless anyone's got anything really um, pressing, then I'll call it a day. Is any- Jahira does have a hand up. Who does? Jahira. Oh, I'll, hi. Say, I'll say hi to Jahira. I haven't seen, hi. spoken to you lately. Hi, Jahira. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Um, is it? Yes, fine. Um, is, it, is it only stillness now? Because the past is not tangible, something that we can physically touch um, or go back to? Well, the past is just memory, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's just a memory. And and that's why nothing's consecutive and leading to the next thing, consequential, like you were saying. Yeah. You know, I, I could get all Eckhart and say there is only now, but I, I I really consciously don't say that because it's just becomes a, a something that you can, you know, as if you could have more of it. That there could be, there, there isn't more or less of whatever we're calling life. And life, one thing that is really hard to um, accept is for, for self is that continu the, the idea of continuity is just an idea. Another way of saying it, Jahira, is that this, what, we what, what I'm I use the word this, that this dies as it's born. It, there's not birth and then there's life in between and then death at the end. I, I'm just working at a new job that um, talks a lot about self-improvement and the guy is always saying like, there's the year you were born and the year you die and there's a dash in the middle and make that dash count. Like they're always <laughs> constantly saying that like, yeah, well, that's, is, you know, that's how the, to make I mean, that, that, is, that is a good description of how self um, experiences. Life, yeah. that I've got to make this count. This time is running out. This time is short. 
and it's running out. I've got to make the most of it. You know, I've got, I've wasted a lot. I mean, you look at my past, there's a shitload of wasted time there. And uh, I've got to get my act together because, you know, I'm not getting any younger. Look at, look at the state of me. <laughs> so it's relief from that. I mean, that's a dreadful, that's, I've just described <laughs> the majority of human beings way they look at their life and it's just shit. There we are. I'm not saying what I'm speaking about is less shit. Well, I kind of am actually. I'm saying, yeah, it's a lot less shit without you and your notions of how you've wasted so much of your life and um, that time is precious. And again, Thank you. Par paradoxically, Jahira, life is more, life is much more precious without time. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, but it is. You know, because there's no waiting. Here it is. <laughs> Nothing to wait for. So, but um, so I was listening to this guy, Jazz Brown, on Nothing Media the other day, and he was saying, like, uh, not here now is just a form of entertainment. Like, so we could, like, play in that and, like, pretend and just entertainment if we're not, if we're, if we're, if we're living in anything but the here and now. Yeah. Right? But this, uh, what I'm speaking about is the end of the one who would be pretending or being real. You know, playing that game. Oh, I'm going to pretend I'm happy today and go out and have a party. Or today I'm going to be real and really I'm miserable, so I'm going to be very miserable today. Well, I did say I was going to stick to an hour today, but I haven't done that. But thanks very much for coming, everyone. Um, lovely to see you. Um, thanks, Lynette, for calling us lovelings. <laughs> oh, it's getting too lovey. I can't get into that. Because what I'll do is I'll set that up and then I'll have to kill it. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. Lovely, lovely to see you all. Um, there'll be a meeting on Monday. And if you'd like to get an invitation and you're not on the mailing list, then email me through the website, timclisthis.com. Um, yeah, and hopefully see some of you Monday. Thanks very much for coming. If you would like to make a donation, then feel free to do that again through the website if you'd like to. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Tim. Thanks. 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 Bye. Bye. Thank Love you, you. Bye. Thanks for this. Thank you. All the best. <laughs>